hi friends welcome to my channel and this is windows server 2019 training tutorial and this is number 20 video in this series and in this video i'm going to show you how to install and configure dfs replication on windows server 2019 so in last video we have installed and configured dfs replication on our first dfs server which is dfs01 and in this video i'm going to show you how to install and configure dfs replication on a on on between two DFS servers so we have discussed uh, namespace and target folders in last video and we have created one namespace and one target folder is attached to that namespace so this is good and let's get in and we'll verify uh, the uh, environment and then we'll uh, start the activity for installing and configuring DFS replication so let's get in this is my demo environment which I'm going to show you uh, used to show you the DFS replication installation and configuration. So the first server is Win2K19 DC01, which is my Active Directory and DNS server. So you can see uh, the IP address is 192.168.0.201, and my domain name is victimfosol.local. So this is Active Directory and DNS and DHCP server. And if I go to local server, you can see Win2K19 DC01. And this is my Active Directory name, Victor Info Soul dot local. And if I go to Tools and Active Directory Users and Computers, so you can see in last video we have deployed our uh, DFS zero one. So next server is Win two K nineteen DFS zero one, which is our primary DFS server. So the IP address is 192.168.0.202 and this is joining in my domain victorinfosol.local so this is going to be a DFS server and I have logged in as a DFS admin account and you can see from here so win2k19 DFS01 and we have created in last video we have created a DFS namespace which is victorinfosol slash uh, dot local slash uh, node HO and we have created one folder also dfs target folder which is public so and the next server on which we are going to install and configure dfs replication is win2k19 dfs01 so this is our bare machine i have just installed a brand new machine uh, here you can see the machine is not uh, renamed, no IP address is not configured and it's not joining domain. So we are going to do this activity right now. Uh, the last machine is our Win2K10 CL01 which is our client machine from where I am going to access this uh, DFS. So let's get in and I'm going to open this DFS namespace on my client Windows 10 client machine. So you can see here if I go Oops. So I'm going to click on OK and now you can see I'm able to access the share for uh, DFS target folder which is public and you can see if I go here you can see where this is mapped so this is mapped on uh, my DFS zero one and if I open in explorer you can see this is going to be our share path and the target folder is you can see the target folder is basically going to be our um, this folder which is attached on uh, uh, the physically stored here in my D drive under the public folder so this is our DFS so let's get started and install the uh, let's configure this machine and install the DFS namespace and replication server so I, I'm on my second server which is DFS02 so I'm going to configure IP address first on this machine and then going to join this machine in domain so 192.168.0.203 and I'm going to set my default gateway and then going to set uh, primary DNS as my domain controller IP so now let's disable IPv6 we don't need IPv6 so I have disabled IPv6 now 
now we are good to go ahead and join this machine in domain so win 2 k19 dfs02 and domain name I'm going to type my credential here so welcome to victimfusol.local domain now we are good to reboot this machine so I'm going to reboot this machine now and after joining this machine in domain I'm going to move this uh, computer account in a correct OU so I'm going to move in a server OUs where our DFS01 is having is located so now this is good we have configured this machine as our requirement we have joined this machine in domain and now I'm going to log in on this machine by using DFS admin account so DFS admin and I'm going to type my credential here and now we need to go ahead and install DFS namespace and DFS replication in last video we have already installed DFS name uh, replication on this machine that's why we are getting replication here under the DFS management so this is good and if you want to verify you can go here and you can verify what we have installed so in file server you can see DFS name is replication and namespace both is installed so this is good now I'm going to install on my DFS 02 machine so role based installation this is going to come under file server so DFS 02 click next then I'm going to expand this file share I'm going to select DFS namespace you can see when I am going to check the namespace it's going to automatically select the file server also so this is good and so namespace and application click next next and install so this is going to install uh, these three roles DFS namespace replication and file server and also it's going to install a management tool so this is good and now the same which I have here in my DFS01 I have one folder in D drive which is public so same folder I'm going to create here uh, I'm going to just create a blank folder or you we can create uh, during the replication also so I'm going to create this folder now so in D drive call it public so we have this folder this is a blank folder so we'll set up the replication and all the data from here uh, which is uh, available in this replication for uh, target folder public it's going to uh, replicate to our DFS02 automatically so installation succeeded go ahead and close this and now I'm going to open tools DFS management So from here you can see the namespace. It's not showing replication. It's not showing so nothing is there. Now I'm going to here and on my DFS one and I'm going to create new replication group. And then I'm going to select the multi-purpose replication group. You can see um, uh, this is going to configure replication between two or more um, uh, uh, servers for publishing content sharing. So I'm going to create multi-purpose click next and then uh, replication group name so I'm going to type is like public public to identify this is going to be replication group for public and you can type here also uh, this is replication group for public share folder so we get an identify and domain is going to be our victim for soul dot local so click next and then we need to select the servers for replication group so the first server is going to be into k19 dfs01 check name and the second server is going to be our dfs02 so both server I'm going to add here in a replication group members so click next and the topology or what type of topology you want to use uh, so I'm going to use the full mesh so click next 
and then we have an option to when you want to replicate the data from your uh, main for uh, you can say the source DFS server to the secondary DFS server so uh, you can also limit the I'm going to select the continuous if you want to select edit any schedule you can go ahead and select the any specific schedule to receive like uh, updates so you can set the bandwidth also if you wish so this is all what you can do but I'm going to so uh, configure replication continuous 24 hours a day and going to select the bandwidth full also if you want to limit bandwidth you can limit the bandwidth also so I'm going to uh, select 24 hours and full because this is going to be um, just assume this is going to be a local server um, both server is going to be in the same data center so click next and then which is, which is the primary member so our primary M member is DFS1 because it's having all the data so this is good select the DFS01 and click next and then you need to replicate the uh, path on folder for the replicate so which folder you want to replicate so I'm going to select here browse and then I want to replicate this public folder so, so select that folder and click OK so this is good we have selected the folder which we need to uh, replicate and use the existing permission so click now next and where you want to replicate this so we have to re uh, uh, give the add in target fold name path also so I'm going to replicate to D and public which is blank which we have created on DFS02 so we have given the source source here folder to replicate and location uh, for other partner so tar destination so we have given source and destination both this is going to be a source and this is going to be our destination so this is good and primary member this and location this this is going to be replicated on secondary member which is DFS02 and path is this so click next and then we have all the options of what we have just selected uh, through this wizard so now click on create so this is going to create the replication group now so it's sometime it's going to take some um, a few minutes to get the replica initial replication done mostly it's going to take five minutes uh, in the scenario which we have just configured so for now if I go on D drive and the public folder you can see we don't have any data yet on this machine so it's going to replicate soon so we have to wait for some time so now you can see the replication has been uh, group has been successfully created everything is looking good so we can go ahead and close this and now you can see replication will not begin until the configuration picked up by the members of the replication group, uh, group. so it's going to it's saying it's going to take some time uh, and it's going to uh, automatically it's going to take place when the pooling interval it's going to start so click OK now you can see here public under the replication public is created so now members you can see DFS01 and DFS02 also you can see the connections which is created so sending member uh, is DFS01 and you can see the both sending and receiving so it's going to be a mesh technology replication so both are uh, sending the data and uh, and receiving also so this is going to be our uh, connections and replication uh, replicated folder which is going to be replicated so this is good and now you can also force the replication so replicate now you can see it's going to be attempt to override the schedule so yes I'm going to override and where it should it said uh, okay so it's going to I think it's in sync right now it's going to be synced so that's why we got this message so let's try to replicate normal use the normal schedule and see okay zoom okay from DFS01 so it's going to take some time to activate this replication so we have to wait for some time and it's going to be replicate automatically so let's wait for some time 
you can see data is not yet replicated so now you can see the replication is done and if you go here and now try to replicate uh, now it's going to give you the the replication schedule is selected connection is successfully overwrite so that means it's going to take some time after creating the replication group so after that time uh, some interval like five minutes is going to automatically going to start and establish the connection and going to work so this is good and now we have both the replication folder under this and we got the data at the both location here you can see on uh, our DC uh, TFS02 and we got the data and DFS01 on both so now let's try to access this folder from client machine and see if I'm able to map it so I'm going to map and then I'm going to copy this path and I'm going to type public so the folder is mapped now so this is good now let's try if uh, what if we are going to kill one server here like DFS01 we are going to disable and we'll see if we are still able to access the share for this DFS because this DFS is now available on both the servers so if you see here na namespace server this is on um, it's going to give you the namespace is only available on DFS01 so I'm going to add on DFS02 also then we'll see so I'm going to win to K19 DFS02 so here you can see I'm going to click OK and now you can see the DFS uh, namespace I have created on both the sh servers so we got this uh, folder created on both the server now so ideally if if one of the server is going to be down the namespace server is going to be down it's not going to impact our share folder to uh, DFS shares to um, it's not going to impact our DFS share folder so what I'm going to do here let's do one thing close in this and open DFS management again so now we got the replication group and namespace both so what I'm going to do I'm going to disable the namespace first for D, uh, DFS01 so now you can see that DFS namespace is only available on 2 and also you can go ahead and disable the public folder if you wish so I'm going to uh, disable this folder also might be the sync is running so I'm going to disable target folder one more time and now you can see it's disabled so target folder public folder on DFS01 is disabled and on this machine it's also disabled so now if I go and access my DFS01 slash public like uh, win to K19 and then DFS01 and then public you can see I am able to access it but it's not available through the um, DFS namespace so what else if I'm going to disable the NIC of this machine and let's verify if I am still be able to access this this share from the DFS so to get this I'm going here and disable my folder uh, from uh, NIC of the D, uh, DFS01 and now if I uh, refresh this uh, share on DFS01 it's not going to connect let's uh, refresh here to verify if we are able to access it so now you can see I'm able to uh, access the DFS but I'm not be able to access the share folder which was available on DFS01 so this is all about how we can create or uh, how we can install and configure DFS replication on Windows Server 2019. So thank you for watching and please subscribe me for more videos and if you have any query any question related to this you can always post them in my given mail IDs. Thank you once again. Bye bye.